Explaining that you are sorry and demanding forgiveness is a fundamental human practice. It shows that we could express the moment we've done something inappropriate and also we have the capacity to be able to be held accountable. This is the reason why every religion involves acts of repentance, also parents go to that further to show their children to apologize from the time they could talk. Explaining that you are sorry is an indispensable component of the thing that allows us to be able to live in communities without fighting. It is social glue. Yet those days, apologies are being told such frequently they have totally do not have their value anymore. And most of the time, apologies are being told so deceitfully by lawyers and PR groups that they are indeed pardons or defenses faking as if they are apologies. Then how are we going to regain the strength of a good apology? The following summary will demonstrate to you in which way to see beyond all the corporate waffles and recognize whether an apology is genuine or not. They are going to show you in which way to accumulate wronged parties in an apology and direct to their grievances. Finally, they are going to aid you to find out that occasionally the best route of taking an action is not to apologize, indeed. Chapter 1 Firms are apologizing so many times that apologizing has lost its importance. In the first couple of months of 2014, American Airlines apologized to consumers the dramatic 200 times every day. You may find that as they were in the middle of a huge crisis, yet indeed, things were going flat. They were apologizing for little things for example delays and foods that weren't appreciated by customers. Firms such as airlines, taxis, and markets are chiefly sensitive to consumer feedback since it's quite applicable for a consumer to complain about companies when they're not happy. If you reserve a Ryanair flight and after get mad about not having the chance to check your pet canary in, you could anytime try your chance with EasyJet as another option. Yet when you get angry about your bank, you would need to go over a lot of boring stuff to fix. This signifies high friction industries such as banks and telecom firms spend quite less energy in customer service. On the other hand, low friction firms, such as airlines, need to give effort so much to have you. The intervention of social media has shown that consumers have the chance to pop their grievances up worldwide. Social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter give firms an opportunity to immediately get in touch with their consumers could have great advantages for making their brands stronger. Yet, on the other hand, it lets consumers a fine place to name and shame firms that have dissatisfied them. To attract customers like that, firms have got to apologize all the time. As this outcoming of grievance may look like a good thing, that indeed makes the action of apologizing lose its significance. When a firm hires a strategy of tactical appeasement as a response to every feedback, it makes the authenticity of genuine apologies weaker. Firms are in need of keeping a perception of proportion as they choose whether and how to say sorry. Making a cringing apology for a little inconvenience makes light of more crucial injuries. The moment Tesco explained they were very sorry for the extreme mistake of giving the wrong medication to a consumer, they seemed genuine. Yet, they claimed they were very sorry for wrongly naming dress-up costumes, as well. One of them might cause serious sickness or worse, death, whilst the other one is fully unimportant. Regarding them, like they are requiring the same type of saying sorry is not normal. As it gets to apologies, quality over quantity. Apologizing neatly indeed uplifts an organization's reliability. It demonstrates that it has the capacity to be authentically reflective and that the moment it apologizes it factually means it, as well. Chapter 2, Outrage Capitalism Has Increased Transactional Apologies In all the things that pop up on your news feed, how many of them are related to corporate wrongdoing? Those accounts have come to be widespread. Yet the fact is, Consumer complaints could start and end in Twitter if it weren't for the plotting of the media in demonstrating those complaints as the great news. Mainstream news writers have found out a surefire solution for making visitors read and share stories, attracting their feeling of outrage. The finest thing to do is stories about guiltless consumers struggling with villainous companies. This is the reason why writers are continuously on the observation of big consumer complaints. When they announce them, a tweet that might have been hiding on Twitter is instantly getting a great deal of attention, making the story stronger and putting even more pressure on the corporation to apologize. 
When they act as such, journalists are having yet another topic while they announce one corporation more which says a humiliating sorry. This chain of manufactured angriness has to lead to crisis fatigue for firms. They're so cautious of protests occurring in the media that they struggle with appeasing customers at any cost, even though they haven't indeed done something wrong. Look at H&M, for instance. In 2018, they got some objections that the symbol on a child's Lego-themed pair of socks might resemble the word Allah in Arabic. Despite the fact that this wasn't real, they said they're sorry and took the expensive step of not continuing the manufacturing only since few people were not happy with the outcome. Outrage capitalism is not the end after mainstream news sites. Shaming on firms has become a profitable industry. Dark PR tactics emphasize on embarrassing company competitors by using villainous tricks, for example, spreading rumors with fake usernames. By now, online trendsetters have been known for brand advertisement. Yet, a great number of them have also been given a great deal of money to disgrace a company for the sake of the other competitors. In which way do firms reply to outrage capitalism, and recognize real, valid discredits from silly or hostile complaints? Basically put, they were required to stop alarming in the aftermath of discredits or real criticism and have a period to mirror what the best type of action may be in a specific case. Maybe a real apology is enough. Yet in some instances, they are in need of standing up to how much to a shakedown done by the viral news thing. Chapter 3 Firms are giving promises which they can't satisfy. In a day that was cold in 2018, starving British families queued up at KFC to get a plate of the brand's famous chicken, and they were told KFC had fully run out of it. Roughly half of UK branches had consumed the main thing and had to shut those branches. Consumers were a bit angry, yet their instinct belief in the brand was still there. Indeed, the moment KFC came and said, FCK, we're sorry. Consumers laughed so hard and left the thing behind them. Anyone knows that plans sometimes don't go in the way they were expected. That is an operational failure, which is so easy to put bluntly. Stock up on chicken said sorry for the incident and kept on. More problematic ones are the things known as cultural miscarriages, which come to the center of things of a brand. Nowadays, Many firms say sorry not solely to supply goods and employments yet also to be devoted to social causes. In a couple of instances, firms indeed keep on their social dedications. For instance, both Ben and & Jerry's and Patagonia have been making a gift of their 1% of financial gain to social causes for a long time. They have clear supply links and spend money on the environment, as well. They precisely invest their money on which their mouths are and that gives them acceptability with consumers. Yet for a couple of other companies, staying with social causes is rather a surface marketing plan than a structural dedication. While Dove declares to spread body acceptance together with its moisturizing soap and Pepsi regards itself in the name of the drink of activists, they're making themselves up for the dense inspection of their marketing operations and campaigns. That is since their promises are nothing but optics rather than substance. The moment a consumer ultimately sees a contradiction between their social commitments and real actions, they are left with a failure of culture and that is not easy to solve. Therefore, they are obliged to say sorry more than one time, rather than giving customers everything and then letting them down, firms must change their strategy to mirror who they actually are. Companies that desire to make money as an exchange for supplying productions or services. That is an approach soft drink company Oasis has utilized with a great outcome. They don't give promises to make families united or make you accept or embrace your scars on your body. Yet they do make sure that they are going to make you get a refreshing drink something that they could really deliver on. Chapter 4, Brands Have Become the Masters of the Art of Saying Sorry, Not Sorry. The cast of Lawland had a couple of moments of pure euphoria when they won the Oscar for Best Picture in 2017. Be that as it may, euphoria went to disbelief when it was uncovered that they hadn't won it by any stretch of the imagination, Moonlight was the genuine recipient. The coordinators, PricewaterhouseCoopers, had botched the envelopes with the winners' names. In an announcement proclaimed the following day, PwC stated, We apologize. For the error that was made. From the get-go, it may seem like PwC was taking liability. In any case, 
by utilizing the passive voice, it was indeed attempting to sneak out of doing only that. Corporate expressions of remorse are popular for being loaded with these sorts of linguistic gymnastics. One corporate technique is to utilize euphemisms or jargon to attempt to make a circumstance look better than it really is. For instance, when a video surfaced of a United Airlines traveler who was fiercely expelled from his seat on a plane, CEO Oscar Munoz exacerbated things when he said the airline had expected to reaccommodate a passenger. This depiction was so withdrawn from reality that it made the discussion around the episode a lot bigger and made online commentators overflow with rage. In a considerably increasingly perilous modest representation of the truth, the chemicals giant Arkema Incorporated would not recognize that there had been a blast at one of its manufacturing plants, portraying it rather as overpressurization followed by a fire. By declining to recognize that there had really been a blast, Arkema misdirected the general population as well as put people on call at serious risk. A few people at the scene were harmed in light of the fact that they weren't appropriately taught about the explosions. Underrepresentation of the truth is just a single linguistic stunt utilized by PR groups. Another is to quietly give occasion to feel doubts about the victim's rendition of occasions by utilizing evasive language. For instance, when it was uncovered that scores of Canadian parents had lost custody of their kids based on flawed tests done on strands of hair, the lab, Motherisk, apologized just that the families feel they may have been impacted in some negative way. That tricky plan causes it to appear that the harm is an inclination, instead of a cataclysmic reality that Motherisk required to account for. That does horrible damage to the victims. Every single powerful statement of regret is predicated on the guilty party recognizing and afterward assuming full responsibility for what occurred. At exactly that point would they be able to request forgiveness. By utilizing jargon, euphemisms, and slippery language, corporate apologies have become non-guarded explanations, instead of genuine expressions of regret. Chapter 5, Companies are failing to recall that apologies should always be focused on the victim parties. Let's think you fall in a dig which has been done by some building workers, injuring your leg. When you complain, the building company responds by saying to you how painful and tough the situation is for them. Probabilities are, you are going to be even sadder by this reply. It may look very obvious that a sorry must focus on the person who has been hurt. Yet many firms do the mistake of emphasizing how the event is going to influence them, other than the victim party. In 2010, BP had a disastrous oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and that caused 11 deaths and 16 injuries aboard the oil rig and killed the environment. The moment he turned his direction to the public, CEO Tony Hayward formed the great mistake of speaking about himself rather than concentrating on the victims. He said, There's no one who wants this over more than I do, I want my life back. Normally, these words lead to a huge amount of resentfulness and outrage, specifically between the families of the people who had indeed lost their lives. Whilst that is a specifically bad instance, the prone to talk about firms other than victims is common. For instance, Samsung utilized an apology to argue safety remains our top priority despite the fact that its Note 7 devices were liable to getting into flames. Also when data company Equifax had a data breach that put 143 million people's crucial information in a hazardous situation, it said that we pride ourselves on being a leader in managing and protecting data. It's acceptable that a firm would clamber to attempt and bolster its good name in the aftermath of such a crisis. Yet here again, Equifax made the process about itself and what it wishes to be, rather than focusing on the victims who had indeed experienced damages. When you're trying to save yourself from your fall and dating your broken leg the thing you want to know is that your relatives see how you're feeling and how much of a broader impact it is going to have on the aftermath. Also that they're so, so sorry. Apologizing doesn't require to be more complex than this. Chapter 6, Saying Sorry is Not Enough firms need to walk their talk. In 2010, a youthful, hoodie-clad Mark Zuckerberg apologized to Facebook clients for disregarding their security and pledged to improve. He had as of late began Facebook, and individuals acknowledged that there were early-stage troubles, they pardoned the apparent lapse. In 2018, Zuckerberg needed to apologize again for breaks in data security, this time with regards to the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Eight years after his first statement of regret, 
his second didn't hold a lot of weight. It's insufficient to state you'll change. You need not contradict it. Willingness makes a solid move was what made JetBlue CEO David Nealman's expression of remorse so commendable. At the point when flight disruptions influenced 130,000 JetBlue clients in 2007, Nealman made an earnest and humble conciliatory apology to his clients. In any case, he didn't stop there, he likewise spread out a strategy. In a YouTube video, he shared a customer bill of rights that nitty-gritty the compensation clients could expect in case of future delays. The organization at that point finished these guarantees, permitting clients to see that it truly took its dedication genuinely. Another approach to flag the reality of your aim is to get the ball rolling where your mouth is and show that you are willing to take a budgetary hit to put things right. H&M pulling its leg a sock line since it caused offense may have been somewhat excessive, yet in any event, the organization demonstrated that it was eager to make things right. All things considered, product recalls are tremendously costly. Starbucks made a considerably emotional signal when it shut down the entirety of its stores with the goal that workers could get racial inclination preparing following an episode in which two people of color weren't permitted to get to the washroom in one of its stores, a representative didn't accept the men were real customers. Making reparations legitimately to influence bunches is another successful technique. For instance, when Papa John's Pizza was attempting to present suitable reparations in light of supremacist comments its founder had made, it chose to give $500,000 to a historically black college, Bennett College. Putting cash was a method of demonstrating the earnestness of its goal. In any case, simply tossing cash at the issue won't cause it to disappear. The custom of reparations is fragile and must be dealt with deference and effectability. When Topshop made a gift of $25,000 to the charity Girl Up just hours subsequent to pulling in criticism for rejecting a women's activist book display, the move was viewed as coarse, a result rather than an authentic demonstration of contrition. Chapter 7, Maybe It's Better Not to Say Sorry at All You may actually think about the fact that the moment you say something about a company, you're mentioning an abstract, unknown presence. Yet really, Beyond all organizations' PR tactic there's a group of real people, also they're most of the time shaking in their boots when they receive the end of a negative social media campaign. When you have thousands of bitter tweets and Facebook posts blaming your company of the most disgusting possible things and proposing a boycott, it could be easy to freak out and try to do everything to attract them back. Yet a firm has to keep a feeling of perspective and be capable of telling the dissimilarity between the feelings of its real customer base and its social media following. The biggest complainers on Twitter might not indeed be the people who buy its goods. The moment the flood of complaints gets down, the PR group has to take a few deep breaths and start searching just before they give out an apology. If they look through the facts and find out they're guilty, then they have to say that they are sorry completely and take actions to make things correct. Yet if in fact, no apology is due, they must stay strong and cling to their truths. It's a hard call to do, yet it's the sole way to keep the real meaning of saying sorry safe, and sound. The Apology Impulse, How the Business World Ruins Sorry and Why We Can't Stop Saying It by Carrie Cooper, Sean O'Mara Book Review Corporations say sorry every time, yet no one indeed means it. They're just saying sorry to attempt and leave the damage at the hands of disgruntled consumers whose sayings are amplified by the viral media. To regain the act of apologizing as an expression of real remorse, we have to say sorry only the moment we've actually done something culpable. When we apologize we must concentrate on the knowledge of the people who've been hurt, take full liability for our wrongdoings, and keep following by our words of reform and reparation. While facing a problem, have some time to mirror before replying. When someone is angry about you, it's very important to reply instantly and try to placate them, or it might be fire back an angry reply of your own. Yet the best replies are neat ones. Take the time to completely look at the event and practice a little soul searching. Are the one who is guilty and at fault? And if that's the case, in which way could you make it correct? One well-designed reply is much more important than a bombardment of messages giving out the initial thing that appears in our minds.